Hey everyone, Pushing Up Roses here, and welcome back to my Chugging Along channel. And I say this because you may have noticed that I've been a little more quiet than usual, and I just feel like I want to talk about why. Though keep in mind, I do have a That Time on Murder, She Wrote video in the works, it's just getting along a little slower than usual. So for today, I am just showcasing one of my drawings while I give you the lowdown, or whatever you guys say these days. The lowdown! So in February, I got COVID, and it was bad. I actually got it on Valentine's Day, so thanks, body. That's great. Even though I'm vaxxed and I have the boosters, it was a pretty bad case and I was out of it for weeks. After the initial symptoms had passed, my energy started coming back, but I noticed the cough stayed consistent. Like, coughing fits would come out of nowhere, uncontrollable and violent. It started calming down, but then in April, I got sick again, not with COVID, but still pretty sick with a fever, sneezing, coughing, and this round lasted into the present. I feel my lung capacity is much weaker. I'll sometimes have coughing fits that last 10 minutes or more. And in general, it's been miserable and scary. I do have a doctor's appointment on the 30th, just to make sure there's nothing more serious at hand. So I know all you people are shaking your fist at the monitor being like, Roses, did you go to the doctor? I'm going to the doctor. Just calm down, Shh, just shut your gob. So I was pretty good prior to getting sick in February. No issues breathing. I could get through a workout or a long trek through Chicago, you know, on my coffee and pizza quests. And it was fine, pretty normal person, no notes. I mean, as normal as I am, which is not very. I can tell in general, I do feel better, but because I've been so sick and tired, my work output is understandably lower, including my art output. That's really hard to say, art, art output, art, art output. And I've also been pretty sedentary. So at this point, if you haven't watched my videos on body dysmorphic disorder and bulimia, I do recommend that you do, only so you can understand what I'm about to say, but if not, uh, you could probably assume a few things with context. Ooh, you know what? I just did a Twitter thread about this, so I'm just gonna read it because I don't expect anyone to sign up for that hell site and it'll save me some brain power, yeah? I do wanna warn that some of my story involves grooming, fat phobia, and abuse, so know that before listening. If you don't have the spoons to listen to me discuss those topics, then it's okay to click away and find something a bit more comforting. This is what I wrote. As many of you know, I had an eating disorder for about 12 years caused by BDD and an abusive boyfriend verbally assaulting me when I was 15, saying things like I was, quote, big as a house and, quote, too fucked up to love, etc. I ended up dropping about 100 pounds rapidly due to bulimia, which later in life caused several pounds of skin to accumulate and cause further issues for me. I actually had nearly five pounds of skin removed from my body when I turned 30. Over lockdown, I gained weight, as many of us did. It's very normal. Then I lost it. Then I got into a happy relationship and gained it. So a little yo-yoing there, but ultimately I did not relapse. I had a few hiccups, I would say, but I did not relapse into that very severe, very chronic bulimia that I had had prior in my life. That being said, my trash BDD brain keeps yelling at me for this weight gain, and as I get older, it becomes impossible to lose. It starts to become this weird control thing for me. Like if I can't lose weight, it means I'm failing at something. It starts to go beyond just an aesthetic and into some personal failure, if that makes any sense. But in reality, I just want to accept the way I am now. It doesn't matter what size I am, I just want to accept myself. And that is tough when you have an obsessive compulsive disorder. It's hard to be accepting, even though you accept people as they are all the damn time. The most upsetting part, when I look back, is that before I met that guy, I felt good in my skin. I had reached a place where I was having fun with fashion, hair dye, piercings, planning my tattoos for when I got older. I was 15, he was 20. A year with fat phobic remarks and verbal abuse from him destroyed me." End quote. Lately, I'm just feeling a little re-triggered, even though logically, I know that I just want to accept myself. Though I do want to discuss the nature of BDD and what we tend to see. Keep in mind, like every mental illness, it will manifest differently in different people, but there are always key elements that make the illness what it is. In BDD, it's the fact that people perceive their appearance incorrectly or inaccurately. I've also read a recent study that says people with the disorder see themselves differently than how they see other people. Here's some of what the study said, and if you want the full article, I will have that linked in the description for you. Quote, 
It turns out that people with this condition have abnormal brain function when it comes to looking at pictures of their own faces, according to a new study led by Fusner and published in the Archives of General Psychiatry. When viewing themselves in photographs, patients with BDD underutilize parts of the brain used in seeing the face's overall shape and size, he said. If you just see the pieces of your face and not seeing how they fit into the whole, then it's going to look distorted, he said. That's how we interpret the findings. Researchers used functional magnetic resonance imaging to look at the brains of participants as they viewed photographs of their own faces and familiar faces. Subjects viewed pictures that were high spatial resolution, showing details such as skin blemishes, and low spatial resolution, showing the general shape of the face and unaltered. The findings showed that when BDD patients viewed normal and low resolution photos of themselves, they had abnormal brain activity in visual processing systems. Also the part of the brain that helps guide behavior and maintain emotional flexibility, the frontostriatical systems, had unusual activation patterns. So, too long didn't read, my brain activity be fucked. I see my face and body differently than how you see it. But when I look at other people, I see them more accurately because I'm using a different part of the brain. A different part of the brain is lighting up when I look at you. And I also just tend to find physical beauty in, in all people. I don't think I've ever called anyone ugly or have been judgmental about how people look, aside from poking at silly fashion things and, and maybe some makeup choices, you know, something like that. I don't even really like calling someone I don't like ugly. It just feels like a very bizarre thing to me, which I know is weird because when it comes to myself, I'll call myself the very meanest things like abnormal, alien, disgusting, all those punishing things my brain conjures up to make me sad. What makes things a little more complicated for me is that my disorder has some connection to trauma. It's connected to being abused by the 20 year old I had met when I was 15. I'm not sure it even matters what weight I am or how I look, especially since I'm going to see something frankly bonkers in the mirror anyway, but because my issues tie heavily into control. I felt so out of control when it came to how this older man treated me, so I thought, what can I control? My body? And trust me, as a very tattooed person, I believe in bodily autonomy and the right to wear what we want, look how we want, make medical decisions regarding our body, making health decisions. But this kind of control is really just a band-aid for a greater issue. It almost doesn't even become about the body. It becomes about numbers, how much I can exercise, how strong I become, how much I eat, which then caused a pretty severe fear of food. And of course, alongside the experience of being with a sexist, fat phobic person, I think we all know that historically, women have not been treated very kindly when it comes to our bodies. So this combination of completely unrealistic societal standards and people ultimately shunning fat people, including some doctors that have honestly just made me feel even worse about my self if I didn't stop drinking, quote, all those lattes, has had a profound impact on people with BDD. What I want is to be able to just not care, but easier said than done, right? Considering my brain just won't work with me. It is a very stubborn, very tenacious brain, and that helps me to slay buttheads on the internet, but it's doing a piss poor job helping me to accept myself and quell my intrusive thoughts. Get it together, brain. What are you even doing up there, girl? I do have a therapist that is involved with fat liberation and is helping me to find words beyond my body. No matter what size my body is, I need to be able to find worth as a person. She's also talking me through a few abusive relationships I've had and how my trauma has affected my ability to have healthy ones, how to give myself grace, and how to stop punishing myself because this control over my body seems to be more of a practice in torture than anything else. What I would love more than anything is to just accept myself even if my perception is wrong, even though I know the wrong damn part of my brain is gonna light up and steer me away from the truth, I need to be able to accept that that is what's happening. I will say that it can sometimes seem impossibly hard. Imagine you go outside and you see the sky and it's purple. So you tell someone that, you say, the sky's purple, that's what I see. 
but everyone else you know tells you the sky is blue. They make a very strong case for it, and it makes sense, but you look up and it's still purple. When I look in the mirror, I see those weird distorted details, an alien. And when my partner looks at me, he sees a pretty girl with sadness in her eyes. So how do you believe something when you see, right in front of you, this thing? It's admittedly the wrong thing, it's, it's a wrong thing, but it is what you see and it is what you live with. So to recap, <laughs> ah, this has been fun, hasn't it? I've been sad and struggling, and I think my mental health has been impacted by being so sick. I just can't imagine that they're not linked somehow. When I'm sick, my weird brain is like, oh, I know these symptoms, you're depressed. My brain tries really hard, so I don't want to be too harsh, but come on! When I go to the doctor next week, I also plan on adjusting my meds. It might just be time. I've been on a good psychiatric med for a few years now. It's It's been good, but they can lose their effect over time, and I think considering the severity of how I feel, it's time to try other options. My cat and my partner have been my support, never letting me fall and always trying to sleep on top of me while purring. Yes both of them. It's very weird. I also met a very supportive group of friends that know what's going on in my ding dong but trying really hard brain and they've been great. Man, I do not want to just dwell on all this crappy crap. So here's some things I'm proud of. Why not? Number one, I sold a painting in a gallery and got paid for it with money. Two, I helped my partner with a very involved anniversary celebration for a comedy show in Chicago and it was amazing and fun. Three, bought some jump rope. This is not related to anything. I got lost in a jump rope TikTok rabbit hole and decided I want to learn some sick tricks. Four, my tattoo journey is going well and I've been having a ball collecting from artists I love. Five, found a tribe of awesome people who love adventure games. Fuck missed though. Six, bought a cool hat. Right, so there's some cool updates. I do want to thank you all for watching my videos, especially the Murder She Wrote content. That's really my favorite content to write and edit for. It's like revisiting my grandma's house and listening to her and my grandpa argue about whether they've seen that episode or not. Grandma always won, by the way. So that's where I've been and where I'm at. It's difficult and ongoing, but I'm doing my best to manage everything while trying to edit and create new art and to not get mired into the mud that is depression. Obviously, I'm still here, so that's, you know, probably the most important part of all this, because if I wasn't here, then there wouldn't be anyone to take care of Basket, my cat, and I highly doubt anybody else wants to review Murder, She Wrote, so gotta keep going. I gotta do it for the cat. I do hope you like this little line drawing, and I'm sorry <laughs> it's not a bit happier. Oh, I'm so depressing. But even when I'm happy, this is what I end up drawing. When I'm in a good mood, I still, I still draw this. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching and listening to me. And until next time, keep going.